Welcome to Pro Tradecraft's Weatherization Nation, a show about building smart from the start. Last week we tore down an addition on the back which left four large holes in the house. Ray and his crew have a method for filling those holes to keep dust out of the living space if the clients choose to remain in the house during renovation. We put up some temporary walls. We went with two by four walls so we could get uh, R13 insulation. We put half inch OSB on the outside uh, so we could seal it off. And then we put plastic on the inside. And we use seal seal on the top and bottom to really, really try to do anything we can uh, help keep down, mitigate any dust. Uh, as a homeowner you're living in the house. It's a good thing that Ray and his team were inside keeping the dust down too because the excavators and foundation crew were outside digging a big hole and filling it with footings and block walls. While they were at it, the foundation crew incorporated a footing drain and a dimpled sheet drainage mat on the outside of the foundation. This week we're going to fill that hole with a warm and dry crawl space. First they'll waterproof and then they'll insulate the walls with Thermax foam insulation. Here's what the plan looks like in animation land. Footings sit on the earth, which is always wet. So to keep the footing from acting like a wick, paint a damp proofing layer on top. Now you can build a block wall above it, waterproofing the outside of that too. A dimple sheet is a great way to disrupt groundwater from pushing past any gaps or cracks in the waterproofing. To keep airflow to a minimum, all cores of the blocks are filled with mortar. It's also a structural thing. Set the anchor bolts and you're ready to install the mudsill, which sits atop the sill sealer gasket. Mark IV goes the extra step of sealing gaps between the mudsills with an elastomeric caulk. Seal against horizontal airflow as well as vertical flow. Once the plates are sealed together, you can bolt down the mudsill and move inside. On top of the compacted ground, add a layer of gravel before laying the plastic vapor barrier. Another tip from Mark IV is to use some cruddy, beat-up plastic over the gravel and under the finished plastic. This first layer is a sacrificial one for construction. It saves the vapor barrier plastic from nicks and cuts caused by walking on it. The vapor barrier covers the floor and runs up the walls. Any seams should be overlapped and taped with a high-quality contractor's tape such as Dow WeatherMate. The top of the plastic is stapled to the mud sill and the walls are covered with Thermax polyiso foam boards. Polyiso foam is a better choice for greenhouse gases because the blowing agent is water. The edges are sealed with a canned foam along the top, corners, and bottom. All of those layers add up to a high performance crawl space that shouldn't have any leakage problems. <laughs> Before laying sill sealer, Ray sweeps the top of the block foundation. But before even that, a day before in fact, Sorel beds insulation spikes to the wall using a bucket of construction adhesive and a gazillion in one tool. He doesn't just place them wherever it strikes his fancy either. He places them with the foam board insulation in mind. You can see where one sheet ends and another begins, he places a pair of spikes. Between the edges of the sheets, he places them every two feet staggered up and down. With the spikes dried in place, they finish sweeping and get after cutting the mud sills and poking holes for bolts. When laying sill sealer gasket, Ray folds the gasket up to seal the connection between the mud sill and the existing house. Sure, it'll get foamed later, but gasketing connections is always a good idea. Gaps they can't gasket get sealed with caulk. Right there. Right there. He details the top of the joint to make it tight and clean. Before laying the vapor barrier, Ray has a tip. Because um, we found that when we do this and we have the gravel down, as you're working on it, you stretch it out and you're walking on top of it, sometimes you can start to uh, tear, rip, or puncture your plastic. So what we do is we take some of the leftover stuff that we've got, put a couple strips down, so that way when we put our 6 mil or 8 mil on top of it, um, and you're walking on top of it, you're working on top of it, you're not actually creating holes in your vapor barrier, so you're still keeping your consistent vapor barrier. They roughly cover the gravel, not trying to make it airtight or watertight, just covering the main traffic areas. Oh. Now we got a kind of a scrap barrier down first. Now they break out the good stuff. It will fold up the walls, but it also needs to penetrate the insulation spikes without bending. 
So they stretch it out roughly and then work it from one end to the other onto the spikes. So that we don't create any, any tightness on that bottom corner. With the plastic in place, Ray can staple the top to the mud sill. The insulation boards slide onto the spikes and Ray screws the top of the sheet into the mud sill using screws with button caps. Friction fitting washers tighten the insulation to the wall and then the business end of the spike is snipped off. He covers the washers with scraps of flashing tape, mostly to reduce nicks and cuts to workers, but also to interrupt the slight thermal bridge that the spike creates. Finally, Ray covers all the tape with pieces of foil tape. The only reason for this is to reduce the number of times that he has to answer the same questions. Why are the little pieces of tape everywhere? On that topic, here's another tip that we learned from Dr. Joe Stebrick. Use black plastic for this job rather than clear plastic. Why? Because the plastic's job is to keep moisture out of the living space. By definition, that means moisture collects underneath it. If you use clear plastic, the homeowners will call you in the middle of dinner to ask why there's so much water under their crawl space. If you use black plastic, that call will never come. With the insulation in place, they break out the great stuff to seal the edges. They hit the gap at the bottom, the corners, and where the insulation butts the existing house. Now Ray cuts off the excess plastic. So what I'm trying to do is cut it on a little bit of a bias, like a slight bit of an angle, so that really that, that uh, foam is going to grab to the back side of this foil and to the sole plate. A final run with the can foam seals the seams between the panels and at the top of the assembly. While we're waiting for the next episode of Weatherization Nation, the framers are going to frame walls, stand them, and nail them together. When they're sheathed, we'll be able to apply Tyvek WRB and learn from an expert what that is and why it matters. Important factors about the WRB, weather resistant barrier, it's an air and water barrier. Then we'll flash and install a leak-free window in our weathertight wall. <laughs>